Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Eye on Port. It is proudly brought to you by West Blue Consulting, Goyle Company Limited, uh, Ghana Revenue Authority, and Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Also, uh, quite a number of media outlets are uh, partnering with us. The Ghana Web is one of them, the Business and Financial Times, Graphic Business. If you get a copy of the uh, Tuesday edition of uh, Graphic Business, you realize that almost every detail of what happens here are captured in there. The same way the Business and Financial Times, the Thursday edition of that paper, you should be reading a lot about the happenings around the industry that emerge out of this program. This program, the abridged version, will be aired on GH1 television tomorrow. Uh, that's Monday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, another will be aired on Ghana television at uh, 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Folks, quite a number of things are happening within the industry. Uh, this week, there was a lot of talk about the African continental free trade uh, area, as well as the Secretariat and the agreement. Uh, a lot of things have happened. There was a Bay Conference. Uh, quite a number of people attended from across the entire continent. We'll be dealing with this subject with the men uh, who have been involved with this particular uh, concept for a long time. They will be explaining to us what exactly it is about and also uh, let us understand to what extent Ghana stands to benefit from this and what will be your role in this whole African uh, continental free trade agreement as well as the secretariat business. In the meantime, other news that are happening around the port industry, quite a number of them, the Port and Harbors Authority uh, has done something. The Fish and Harbor has also done something. A number of them take a listen to it and then we'll come back. The Tema Fishing Harbor has held its third quarter stakeholders meeting where management of the Fishing Harbor took its stakeholders through the progress of ongoing projects at the Fishing Harbor and its environs. The marketing and public affairs manager of the Tema Fishing Harbor, Joanna Ada, announced that most refurbishment works outlined in the year's budget are completed and others are far advanced. The completed works include a canoe basin shed extension, a fish handling and crate shed extension, extension, repairing of damaged commercial roads within the fishing harbor enclave and sewer lines, provision of bullets at the quayside to help more vessels. According to her, these works, which cost the Port Authority an excess of 2 million CDs, are all geared towards providing a conducive and safe environment for stakeholders and customers of the fishing harbor. You never know uh, when the rains will come. You never know when the severe sun will come. So when they are under the sheds, at least they can be doing their business when it is even raining. So we have to provide these sheds for them. She revealed that the health post, which was promised to the fishing community, is still under construction and when completed, will be open to all at affordable rates. We are having a whole number of uh, projects that we have done, some ongoing. One of them is the clinic that uh, we are putting up. The intention is to be able to get them to readily access uh, health care. Members of the fishing business community welcomed these projects with praise and urged the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to continue to provide the needed infrastructure for its clients. What can be about clinic? Why you be a fish market for? Yeah, can you be a channel? I say, yeah, yeah, be my more bomber than share simple my stress and more bomber. Beidou Alassan, Deputy Port Security Manager for the Tema Fishing Harbor, asked users of the port to acquire all necessary permits to use the port in order not to cause complications with security officers. You don't have a port permit and you are to enter into the port. We would like to believe that you work with the vessel's agents. So usually what we do is that we ask the agents to give us the name of those that they want to come and work in their vessel when the vessel calls. So at least is submitted to the security and then it puts as where the passes are issued. So if you walk in there and you said, my vessel has come, I'm going inside. The security person there doesn't know who owns a vessel, who doesn't own. The Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Michael Luguje, has assured of GPHA's commitment to ensure traditional communities around the port enjoy their due benefits from the great economic asset, which is the port. The DG of GPHA, who was speaking when an entourage of traditional authorities of the Nungwa traditional area 
paid a curtsy call on GPHA said, despite current challenges in stabilizing long-term finances of the Port Authority, considering the Nungwa traditional area and its corporate social responsibility would always be a priority of GPHA. The kind of benefits that the traditional council can get from, from this port expansion is just going to be the same benefits that GPHA is considering, has been providing and will continue to consider on a year-on-year -year basis in terms of the social responsibility projects. The Paramount Chief of Nungwa, Ni Odaifu Welenchi III, on his visit, called for more recognition of Nungwa in port development plans, since the port is being developed more and more into its territory. Blame a on your jurisdiction is even less than the expansion of Nafi. The whole of the expansion of follow within Nungwa. The Kaji were boundaries of the community, say, the Habo Eabote Nungwa boundary. The Nungwa chief requested GPHA support in providing some social infrastructures to improve the lives of the people of Nungwa. If there is so much research, no one smoke on the cafe, no one can lay, can yeah, abatashin, no one eat bany, no one in any research any, no one boni is so like a cafe, gafwa bana minche, no Nungwa bana minche, no one conform with no one who obey no the DG of GPHA expressed GPHA's intention to come to the aid of the community and called for continuous collaboration from the traditional authorities and his outfit towards the development of society. The International Chamber of Commerce Ghana has paid a working visit to the MPS Terminal 3 in the Tema Ports to familiarize itself with activities at the ultra modern port infrastructure. Aside the tour, the members of the ICC Ghana were taken through a presentation of the vision of the Tema Port by Mohamed Samara, CEO of the Meridian Port Services, who emphasized that the Tema Port is strategically positioning itself for transshipment services. We have a bigger discharge. Having a, a higher discharge, normally the shipping lines will prefer to come here as a first port of call. Also, we have the highest concentration of all shipping lines. 14 services or 14 shipping lines that come to West Africa actually come to Tama. The Secretary General of the International Chamber of Commerce, Emmanuel Donikwame, revealed that his outfit is one of the key advocates for the drafting, ratification, and implementation of the World Trade Organization's Trade Facilitation Agreement and seeks to inspire efficient ways of doing business by players in the post logistics chain. In Ghana, with, uh, as part of the Global Alliance for Trade Facilitation, We've been working closely with the Ministry of Trade and other partners to more or less encourage uh, all the parties to see to it that uh, we improve on the ease of doing business in, in Ghana. It has uh, more to do with the time and cost in doing business. He said this is why the International Chamber of Commerce has taken up the responsibilities of interacting closely with stakeholders in the port logistics chain who are key in trade facilitation for collaboration towards the ease of doing business objective. The Secretary General of the ICC Ghana also disclosed that MPS management has assured the chamber that it intends to consider making office room for them as well as other technical partners of the port to help give them hands-on education on their everyday developments at the Tema port and assist in addressing challenges that may arise. I will even recommend that instead of even having our meetings in hotels, uh, they are prepared to provide a facility for all the technical partners to be here so that we will have our meetings here and see things first time. Every party does to also assist them to improve on the services they provide here. Emmanuel Doni Kwame, touching on risk management systems deployed in Ghana sports, expressed that there is more to be desired in order for goods to be cleared within the green zone, which implies no physical inspection on cargoes. We all know the position of government that we need to get more of our goods in the green zone. Uh, is it what's happening? It, it's not happening that way. What, what, what is making it difficult for us to get more goods uh, within the green zone?
So now to our main subject for today, this week, in the past week, I mean, uh, there was a big conference in this country that uh, took a look at the African continental free trade uh, area, as well as uh, Ghana's uh, uh, winning to host the Secretariat and all of that. Big conference, it gathered a lot of stakeholders from the entire African continent uh, who deliberated on quite a number of things. Let's run through it when we come back from that. Uh, we will discuss the African Continental Free Trade Agreement in detail. The Minister of Trade and Industry, Alan Kwejutre Mantin, has stated that government is developing a national program of action, NPA, for the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA. He revealed that the NPA, which will be ready within the next three months, will form the basis for implementation of the AFCFTA as there will be timelines associated with each set of activity. How do you identify what South Africa needs? that you can sell to South Africa or Angola or Uganda and that set of activities in respect of trade information would also be part of the national uh, program uh, of action. Speaking at the closing ceremony of the three-day national conference in Accra on the implementation of the AFCFTA, the minister indicated that there was the need for an institutional mechanism to guide the planning and implementation at the national, regional, and hopefully district levels. Alan Tremantin also revealed that there would be a national coordinating office that would plan, direct, and coordinate all the AFCFTA implementation activities in the country. We need to be able to go to particularly the rest of the regions to get a sense of their own understanding of the CFTA and what the expectations they have from government to help them to be able to take advantage of this. So we'll do a series of consultations around the country. Some recommendations made at the end of the three-day conference to boost intra-African trade were read to participants, which include the need to promote maritime transport. We also mentioned that for us to be effective in terms of doing trade, there's the need for us to look into trade-related infrastructure. And on trade-related infrastructure, you, you, meant, you indicated that there's the need to promote maritime transport, there was the need for a reduction in the cost of air transport. There was the need to enhance air transport connectivity among African states. You also raised that there's the need to enhance railway connectivity internally and across Africa. Some participants also shared their thoughts. We've been able to um, harness the advantages and going forward, I think we are going to also sit down to make sure that um, they, um, we play this to the advantage of the Ghanaian. It's a free continental uh, free trade is good, but however, my fears is that uh, what measures are they putting in place to make sure that at the end of the day, if we implement the whole thing to the fullest, uh, it will not be disadvantage to the indigenous, to the Ghanaians. Free movement of goods comes with logistics, all right? And with all this CTFA, without Africa having um, the needed logistics framework mm, to support this call, it is going to be very difficult because this um, West, as we know, they are not in for us. Senior Minister Yao Osafomafo has challenged businesses across Africa to make known the difficulties trade barriers create in order to find common resolutions for them. According to him, there is the urgent need to reduce red tapes and avoidable bureaucracies which hold businesses on the continent to ransom. If manufacturing should be competitive and it takes me 15 days to clear my goods from the cargo when it takes others two days, is that the way to go? No. We should look into all this and come up with solutions to support the continental free trade. 
speaking at the closing ceremony of the three-day African Continental Free Trade Area AFCFTA conference in Accra. The senior minister said the agreement will create new ties which will be underpinned by deeper economic operations through trade and mobility of goods and services. He said the hosting of the AFCFTA secretariat has made Ghana the heart of African's quest for expedited economic emancipation that will bring prosperity to the African continent. We think that this Trade integration is key to the whole integration of the continent. He mentioned that the AFCFTA will give Ghana the competitive advantage in the pharmaceuticals industry and other sectors as well. He allayed the fears of some Ghanaian traders that the AFCFTA will make them lose their businesses to other African continents. As we listen to our contributors, people are worried about people getting into their market. People are worried about competition. But is the Nigerian market not bigger than your market? You are also enabled and allowed to get into the Nigerian market, which is about 200 million. So we should not be looking at this as freeing others to take your, your market. Because other markets are also being made available to you. Osafuma added that there is the need for government to provide policies which will make Ghanaian productions competitive and cheaper for industrial base. We should make sure that the government provide policies which make Ghanaian production competitive. In most countries, power for domestic use is more expensive than industrial use. In Ghana, it's the reverse. It is these things that we should try to change. He advocated for tertiary institutions in the country to begin to embark on research that will improve trade and commerce on the African continent. This is a challenge to our investors. We should not be doing theoretical research into areas. Now pick a problem within the continental free trade in one of the investors, research and bring the final results to the secretariat. The senior minister said there are risks with AFCFTA which African countries must work collectively to address to make the manufacturing industry more competitive. He added that the government of Ghana is ruling out various interventions and initiatives which will make Ghana competitive and robust in the AFCFTA. Okay, so that's what happened uh, this week, or I should say the past week, uh, throughout uh, at the Con International Conference Center. There were a lot of uh, African countries gathered uh, to talk a lot about the African continental free trade. Uh, whether it's agreement and also the secretariat and this area, I'm sure that by the time we close this program, we're going to understand it in detail. And fortunately, uh, we have been able to put together the best team that will help us understand the entire. There are some people who are even struggling to pronounce the abbreviated mm -hmm. version of the African continent. Some say AFTA, some say AFCTA, whatever it is. I'm sure that we'll get the answers before we leave here. Unfortunately, I have the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry. is also a member of uh, Parliament for Tema West, Carlos Ahinkra, with us. Honorable, pleasure to have you. Pleasure to be here. It's always good to see you. Also, we have the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta. Uh, Dr. Obing is also with us. Doc, pleasure to have you around. And then my own uh, friend and brother, Ziad Hamui, is the president of Borderless Alliance, Ghana. Ziad, also pleasure having you around. So we're going to return after the break. And when we come back, serious business on the African Continental Trade Agreement. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology. Highly advanced for modern engines. Prolongs oil change intervals. Save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. 
good energy. Dear valued client, the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is now live to make it easy to track your consignment and know the estimated duty payable for both general goods and used vehicles. We are pleased to inform you that the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is available for download on Google Play Store for Android users and the App Store for Apple users. This is the best opportunity for all importers and exporters to know the duty payable on every good under transaction. You can reach the team for inquiries and support by calling plus 233-242-435-663. Send an email to support at ghanastradinghub.com. To remain updated, kindly follow progress on the following platforms. www.facebook.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub, www.twitter.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub, and ghlinkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. Importers and exporters can download the official Ghana Single Window mobile app, which allows you to track your consignment conveniently and also allows you to obtain your estimated duty for general goods and used vehicles. Please spread the message to everyone importing or exporting. The Ghana Trading Hub mobile app is now live. Download and never be cheated. This is powered by the Smart Ports Project under the auspices of the Government of Ghana and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Smart Port, improving Ghana's ease of doing business. Utiliser les ports de Théma et de Takoradi, c'est avoir un traitement rapide et sécurisé de vos marchandises diverses en conteneurs, en sacs ou en vrac, ainsi que tous vos véhicules en transit. Le Ghana a construit un parking bien pavé pour tous les véhicules en transit. Une nouvelle gare frigorifique pour le stockage de la marchandise congelée en transit. Avec un nouveau centre de traitement de données construit et la mise en œuvre efficace d'un guichet unique national qui permet aux données d'être accessibles par tous les intervenants, le traitement des dossiers dans les ports du Ghana est maintenant efficace et plus efficient. Utiliser les ports du Ghana, c'est profiter des systèmes de portes électroniques et d'exploitation des terminaux ainsi que de la réservation des navires en ligne, entraînant ainsi un parc de camions fiable pour un acheminement de vos marchandises dans les brefs délais avec un suivi satellitaire jusqu'à nos frontières. Les, femmes, à vous les, honneurs. les ports de Théma et de Takoradi célèbrent la femme. Que les bienfaits de cette célébration apportent plus de bénédictions. Welcome. Uh, we're about unpacking um, the African Continental uh, Free Trade Agreement as well as Ghana's uh, hosting of its secretariat. And um, my guest again is Honorable Carlos Ahenkra. He's a member of parliament for Tema West, uh, also the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry. Also, Dr. Uh, Joseph Obing is the president of Ghana Union of Traders Association. Ziad Hamui is the president of Borderless Alliance. Uh, Honorable uh, Minister, I'm going to start, Deputy Minister, I'm going to start with you because uh, quite a number of people, and I'll tell you that particularly even in the trading community, not a lot of people understand what's going on when you talk about this African continent of free trade. When it was all over that we are hosting it, the Secretariat, people just didn't get it. What, what is this business about? Because I know that your yourself, the, your ministry, and your minister have been working very, very hard uh, to make sure that this thing happens and happens well for us and also hosting the secretariat and all of that. Unpack it for us. Good. Um, let me say a good evening to yourself and the viewers and um, say that I'm glad to be here today um, after a very long time uh, to, I mean, uh, speak to viewers of uh, Metro TV. The AFCFTA, which is the African Continental Free Trade Area. It's a program adopted by African leaders to uh, merge the markets of Africa and have one complete trade area, duty free quota free, okay. for movement of goods and services across Africa. Um, they have agreed that you could be uh, in one country and produce goods and export to another country without any hindrance when it comes to payment of import duties. Okay. Of course, um, 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 the quantum of amount or amount of goods that you can take to this country. No limitations. No limitation. Um, I would say that uh, it's probably the best thing that happened to the African continent 
uh, after the organization of Africa Unity was established somewhere in the 60s. Because uh, for the first time, leaders in Africa have agreed that um, it is important that they consider what they call their own, especially when it comes to raw material uh, generation from this particular part of the world. Mm. And the AU leaders have shown very high commitment when it comes to the AFCFTA by agreeing to commit 90% of all products that emanate from our uh, countries and leave the 10% for ex exclusive and se sensitive uh, cargo. Mm -hmm. And when we say exclusive and sensitive cargo, these are cargoes that um, the various countries will want to protect or give some barrier, form some barrier, ring fence yeah. to ensure that um, the manufacturing of those products in their countries are not, not affected. Um, these particular uh, sensitive cargo, as I mentioned, would be negotiated on a bilateral basis, okay. whereby let's say Ghana and South Africa can negotiate and say that look, I'm protecting my pharmaceutical companies. You want to bring pharmaceutical products here, you have to allow me to bring that, this in your country, or you need to pay this duty or I'll reduce. That's a negotiable thing between two countries, the 10% okay. sensitive items. But all the other products, the 90% of the totality of it, has been um, um, released to uh, um, a full commitment where um, countries in Africa or the leaders in Africa have agreed that uh, we allow this uh, goods to go. In fact, um, if you consider the benefits of what this is actually uh, going to bring to African countries, um, we, for the first time, we need to have the opportunity to add value to the products that we have. Okay. We're also going to have the opportunity to improve um, or boost intra-African trade, whereby trading between African countries will improve because uh, either two people uh, within the same continent are not able to trade amongst themselves in a way that you would have expected them to do. Like, for example, if you go to Asia, uh, intra-Asia trade is around 50%. Uh, in Europe, it's about um, about 70 percent. Even the U.S., the North America is about 90 percent. In Africa, it's 14 percent. 14. 14 percent. And even that is even a bit doubtful, mm -hmm. because if you consider the fact that when I stay, I sit here in Ghana, and I want to sell goods into the uh, Cote d'Ivoire, um, based on the volume of these goods, if you want to ship this, uh, if you want to ship them by sea, you would have to spend more time than somebody who wants to ship the same consignment to Europe mm -hmm. or wants to ship the cons same consignment from Europe to West Africa. means that we don't have any means of trading amongst ourselves by way of transporting these items uh, in, 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 in a very mm -hmm. comfortable way. So the goods will have to go all the way to Europe and descend down again. Wow, yeah. that has been the case. In fact, that is what it is now. I see. And it might interest you to note that somebody in Morocco will be looking for some type of goods to buy, which can, be, which can only be found in Ghana. But he might not know anything about these um, goods, but somebody in Holland would find out and, and rather purchase the goods and ask him to ship to Morocco. And so trade information also comes into play, and I believe that once we go around, we'll, we'll talk about all of that. we we'll talk about all that. So in effect, the AFCFT is only a program that's allowing Africans to, for the first time, trade amongst themselves and ensure that anywhere, everywhere in Africa that you find yourself, you can produce goods, sell goods, and not be hindered by any regulation. So you, you talk about the fact that the current, and that's what I was going to ask you, that what's the difference between what we're hoping to see with the, uh, the after, and then what exists now? The status quo, the current situation, uh, w w how, how is it, how difficult it is to trade among ourselves and you talk about the fact that it is even possible for somebody to get goods uh, uh, in Holland from Ghana than the person in Morocco getting goods from Ghana. Yeah. Apart from that, what, what are some of the hindrances? What has been some of the impediments? Well, the challenges in Africa or the challenges in boosting intra-Africa trade has been um, one of very, uh, you know, I would say human-centered. First one that I, I like to lay hands on is the uh, currency. Um, Ghana spends our legal tender its CD. If you go to the Francophone countries, they, um, they Safer. use the SEFA. Mm -hmm. uh, Egypt has their own dollar. Um, Morocco has their own money. 
and so we don't have the same currency. Mm. So okay. because of that, there's a serious challenge in the inter-country or intra-country mm -hmm. exchange rate. Mm -hmm. Most of these currencies are not convertible currencies. Yeah. And so if I take my CDs and go anywhere beyond Togo, it is not worth anything in those countries. Okay. Similarly, if you bring Egypt's money into my country here, since we don't have any direct link with Egypt, it becomes a as far as I'm concerned. So currency becomes uh, a problem. And because of that, it is very difficult for banks in, in Africa to trade among each other. Mm -hmm. They all have to have a corresponding bank outside the shores or the walls of Africa. Yeah. We will deal with it and bring it back into Africa. For example, I, I sit here, I ship goods into Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Tanzania has to pay me my money. Because Tanzania banks and the Ghanaian banks don't have any direct link, yeah. but they have corresponding banks in, outside. Mm -hmm. um, and, and of also because of the fact that Tanzanian currency and the Ghanaian currency are not internationally convertible, yeah. we'll have to deal with true dollar or true pounds telling or whatever you call it. So this transaction will go to a bank abroad and this bank abroad will now deal with the bank in my country and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it is a challenge for us when it comes to currency and the financial market. Another one that I can also quickly lay hands on is the language. Uh, if you consider the fact that um, Ghana, as we sit today, we are bordered on our four walls, the four corners, by three francophone countries and the sea. Yeah. So uh, it's a big challenge for us to move into, let's say, Burkina Faso market and be able to, uh, you know, um, sell without any hassle. Uh, the reason being that the labeling and the standard uh, of, 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 of quality of products within the Burkina market will not be the same as I have. In Ghana, for example, you cannot bring any products here which is labeled in French. And I'm sure that they will have the same thing in a Francophone country. So language also becomes a barrier. Mm -hmm. And um, this has been some of the challenges uh, uh, that, that hinders or you know, puts intra African trade abey. Yeah. Another one is what I mentioned earlier, which is the transportation. Yeah. We do not have a means of transporting yeah. goods amongst ourselves. So saying, I like to even extend it to our road network. Uh, if you consider the fact that um, um, you cannot find one very common uh, diet route, let's say from Senegal, all the way to let's say Cameroon road network, you get to a portion, you find some serious. Uh, the challenges on this road, yeah. either security mm -hmm. or whatever, or even sometimes the nature and mm -hmm. the state mm -hmm. of the road itself. Ghana has done well in that department, but trying to um, improve our eastern corridor roads and also uh, ensure that uh, the security on, on this journey is, is quite um, safe. And um, people, especially the Francophones, have come to accept traversing our uh, routes when it comes to uh, shipments or traveling up north. Okay. Um, there are several of them that have hindered our trade practices uh, up and until this point. Okay. But as far as the leaders of Africa, they say enough is enough. Today, whether language, whether financial, whether tourism, whether international property rights, intellectual property rights, whatever it is, we said enough is enough. We're committing ourselves by 90%. We're going to trade among each other. No fight, no language, nothing can stop us from doing this business. And that is what brought about AFCFT. Okay, and to what extent are they ensuring that this is going to be handled and handled effectively? Because as far as I am concerned, the currency challenge doesn't look like it has changed. And I don't think that in the immediate terms, we're gonna see a change or all of us, the entire African continent is gonna have one currency. Uh, probably you would want to shed light on that. Also, the means of transportation. I still haven't seen rail lines connecting even all the West African nations. So to what extent are we still going to improve our connections? I don't remember, I'm, I'm yet to know whether there's any African country that's running a vessel at the moment or running a ship, has a shipping line, for instance. We don't have that. Uh, if you talk about language, our languages are still going to be the same. The Francophone, the Anglophone, those in the Swahili, the, the, the Eastern African countries, it's still going to be the same. So what's going to change with AFCTA? Um, well, um, if you consider the fact that um, something like this has been um, practiced in the past, mm -hmm. where, like, for example, the regional blocks, mm -hmm. the commerce, mm -hmm. the 
Sadek and the Sadek mm -hmm. and things. They all have their original treatment mm -hmm. yeah. protocols that has been going on up and until now. And then, of course, let me use, we are in West Africa, so let yeah. me use the West Africa, Echo for was. example. ECOWAS has something called the liberalization scheme, mm -hmm. where any companies within the ECOWAS subregion, which was uh, enrolled on that program, on, the, on this program, is entitled to ship to these countries quota-free, duty-free. This has been existing for quite a very long time, except that it has some standing blocks or it, it hits some hitches. And uh, the reason why those hitches are not being resolved, could not be resolved at a certain point, is the fact that the very protocol we're talking about mm. uh, did not have what we call the dispute resolution mechanism enshrined in that protocol. I see. We, uh, the West African countries rely solely on um, diplomatic means for uh, as it were, um, solving any situation that would arise in terms of uh, business or trade, tra trade practice. But unfortunately, this is not working. Mm -hmm. And it is giving serious um, hiccups okay. as far as the ETLS is concerned. For example, Nigeria can get up, our big brother can get up and say, from tomorrow, uh, I'm, I've banned 41 products entering my country, uh, which is a non-tariff barrier, which uh, any country can introduce to um, prevent another country from bringing goods into your country. Yeah. Um, they won't say when you're coming, we'll arrest you, no. Or when you're coming, we'll seize the goods, no. But they will say for this 41 products, if you're bringing it into, in, into Nigeria, you're not going to get foreign exchange to pay for it from our banks. Okay. So you will not even attempt or make the attempt to bring any such goods into the country. Luckily for us, in the AFCFTA, we have managed to couch a dispute resolution mechanism chapter okay. in the protocol. So, and this wise, uh, anybody that is bringing goods into any of the African countries, if there's any hindrance or any hiccup, you have something to fall on within the protocol itself. Um, that is first challenge uh, solved there. The second one is the financial one. Fortunately, we, with the protocols under the BIAT, the BIAT is a boosting into African trade. Uh, one of them is uh, financial sector, financial sector or financial services. Um, there's going to be a protocol that will guide us on how our financial institutions are going to also be able to move across borders mm -hmm. and have one single um, financial uh, platform to operate from. If that works, we don't need to spend one currency uh, like uh, euro or dollar. Um, African banks can speak to each other. Okay. Um, Tanzanian bank and the Moroccan bank can speak to each other. They don't need to have a correspondent bank okay. somewhere in uh, Europe or the US. So it makes it even easier. Uh, language, of course, yes, I am very, very much aware that eventually African leaders are going to construct that the official language should be English and French okay. at the point. And we can possibly. Um, taught through our schools going forward I see. so that people would gain that opportunity to be able to survive uh, in that context. So okay. Basically, uh, you know, arrangements are seriously hushed up okay. to get this program. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll pick on Ziad and there are a couple of other things when we come back I'll, I will ask you again. Ziad, from the civil society perspective, uh, what have you observed throughout this journey of arriving here uh, with, with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Yeah, good evening, Sami. Well, be before I answer your question, let me first take the opportunity to, to welcome your, uh, your guests and to maybe officially on behalf of the Borderless Alliance congratulate the Honorable Deputy Minister for their efforts okay. which la and of the Ministry of Trade and the team of Ghana to, uh, to work on hosting the Secretariat. Mm. I think this has been a landmark achievement in the history of Ghana, and yeah. this is to the credit of the ministry and the official Ghana. And as borderless, we are very happy to, to, to hear about this and to collaborate also to ensure the success in harnessing the opportunities for the CFTA. Uh, in answer to your question, partially, I think also we can relate also to the uh, challenges that we used to see in the implementation of the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme uh, across countries because previously there were always problems in implementing good and lofty agreements. So mm -hmm. we come up as countries, we come to the table, we agree to something, and then when it comes to the implementation, we find That's out that where we, the problem is. We find out that we didn't embed 
mechanisms to follow up on the implementation. And then if we do have some monitoring uh, methods, we fail to uh, build in an arbitration uh, mechanism that allows the, the, the traders or the users or the aggrieved parties actually to, to, get, their, to, to get their justice or the fair part in, in justice. With the Borderless Alliance and with other uh, civil society organizations, we have been, let's say, niched in certain areas of our advocacy. For us as Borderless Alliance, we have been focusing on the free movement of goods and people across West Africa. So we have been looking at the obstacles to, to trade and transportation. And we perceive the AFCFTA to be an enhancement over the regional blocks in a way that the markets now will not only encompass West African markets, but it also encompass the whole of the African continent, which is 1.2 billion people and an economy of close to 3 trillion US dollars. So that's a huge market opportunity. We have uh, watched some of the challenges in the implementation of the regional agreements. And uh, uh, the, minister uh, the, the deputy minister was talking about the challenges with the ETLS. And we have been living with some of these challenges with, our, with the users, some of the traders and the manufacturers and the uh, producers, which are based in West Africa, in Ghana, in West or, or in the rest of West Africa. And uh, we have been working on how to first of all, help communicate these challenges across borders from one country to the other. We have been also working on communicating these problems to the regional levels, mm -hmm. because at times there is this lack of communication mechanism with the authorities which are in charge of handling these issues. Just recently, we have solved a problem for one of the larger manufacturer multinational companies based in Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, which have products that were already registered under the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme. They were just renewing the same license to enter these products in Nigeria. And the amount of pressure that had to be applied in order to allow this same, uh, same product, which was uh, in the same mechanism, uh, which was previously agreed, to just be accepted and to go into is incredible. And so if we need that kind of pressure and uh, a political will to move every single product that is being impeded across West Africa, that would be a problem. And we are hoping that with the African Continental Free Trade ag uh, Agreement and area, we will be able to move these products more easily, not just at the level of West Africa, but to the African continent and to the benefits of the countries involved, especially Ghana. Now, I, 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 I want to find out from you because I remember that I was with you some point in time when we spoke with... Uh, the chairperson of the, uh, the Commissioner of Customs of ECOWAS, yeah. uh, who admitted, uh, yes, uh, admitted that quite often, you know, the, 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 the implementation it. is out. They, you know, we, f we have some of these fine protocols coming into place, and the member countries go back, and implementation becomes a problem. We have a typical example. You have been handling the routes and the corridor for, for some time. You know that the, the uh, axle load policy, for instance, is not being implemented by the uh, francophone keeps, countries. And it keeps getting, getting hampered by someone, and then someone else will say, we will also not implement, and exactly. then it gets delayed, and nobody implements Exactly. It. So from the civil society uh, perspective, how have you ensured, or have you been able to follow to ensure that we wouldn't see things like this when we are implementing the YAFTA. Well, um, in particular about the Axel Way, uh, that, was, that was at the political level. And so even though Ghana has displayed the best of... Uh, the uh, commitment. Uh, of commit uh, so they implemented that at first, a few years ago when it was in. And Ghana was the first to implement the new regulations for the Axel Way regulations hoping that the other countries will come in. But then what happened was that this has led to an unfair compet uh, competitive advantage to the Ghanaian truck users. And so this time when we circulated uh, the needs to actually uh, implement it more uniformly and more competitively, mm -hmm. it was beyond <coughs> just advocacy. Because with advocacy, you can bring in your evidence base and you can demonstrate that it is beneficial to all of the parties involved, but then there will always be national interests that might not align properly with 
the uh, with the regional interest. Uh, interest. That's that's basically what I'm trying to find out. That now we are all gearing towards a certain direction. Now, Minister uh, eloquently mentioned to all of us that this is where we are going. We've seen some couple of impediments in the previous. Uh, if you take it yet uh, the. ECOWAS trade liberal, liberalization scheme, for instance, as an example, uh, we've, we've seen the challenges. And we're hoping that we won't see that in the after. I think we However, won't. However, how do we do that? I think we won't see it, or at least we, it will not be as difficult because of the fact that uh, the AFCFTA has learned from the mistakes of the regional bodies which have had challenges with implementation of regional do you think the lessons have been learned? I think so, because they have embedded mechanisms of follow-up in arbitration also. Okay. And, so, and I think there are some sanction mechanisms that have been discussed okay. in some of the texts of the CFTA. So there will be some kind of uh, teeth for that particular agreement, unlike ETLS, which from, the, from its beginning lacked the teeth to actually force some of the countries to implement these regional agreements, which were already agreed by the heads of state. So you can't just come in as a heads of state imp and, uh, and commit by signature to an agreement and then have Return challenges and you, with implementation. You, you are adamant. Especially if, you are, uh, if there are san sanctions which are s clearly stated. And but are there sanctions? Are we seeing sanctions in this one? Well, not we, yet. Not yet, but keep in mind that the second phase will make sure that there will be mechanisms to follow up on the implementation embedded into the agreement itself. Mm. Right? Mm. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to be. Okay. But in the case of the ETLS, for example, or the ECOWAS regulations, there wasn't any kind of uh, mechanisms to rely on in order to force some of the countries to fall in line. Mm. And if you compare some of the regional blocks across Africa to other regional blocks elsewhere, you find out that there are certain carrot and stick approaches where you have, uh, where there is a real motivation to join in a regional block. Okay. But there are also sanctions okay. if you fail to abide by some of the regulations that bind you to that unit. Mm. To what extent, and your last one before I come to Guta, to what extent do you think uh, this after uh, will change the dynamics of doing business or, or in the region? Say the trading public, the ordinary Ghanaian who wants to see a change in the way we do business in, uh, across the continent. Well, I would say the African continental free trade agreement has big positives that, can, uh, that will allow countries which have the fertile ground to reap the benefits mm. to expand their markets, to, uh, to sell their goods and services to a wider scope, okay. and to grow their economies to their full potential. Okay. And that is not just within the West African region. Now we're talking about the whole continent. And so that opportunity is there. But then I keep saying that we need to ensure that we do our homework by building a, a competitive and uh, an enabling business environment in Ghana and in the other countries which will want to reap the full benefit of the continental free trade area. Okay. Doctor, <laughs> I, I, I know that you, you have a lot piled up because all these things we're talking about, now you're on the ground. Uh, you're going to see the benefits if there are, uh, and you're also supposed to tell us the challenges as well. Do you see that this whole after uh, that we're trumpeting would make a difference in the way we trade within the region? Yeah, it depends on how we are going to tackle the whole thing. It depends on lessons learned on the various economic blocks the South African, the West African, and the Eastern, they all have their challenges. So if we're able to um, learn from those and then make a bold and objective decision on the framework itself, then I, I don't foresee any challenges at all. Um, for me, this is about the best thing that could ever happen to the continent of Africa. Good. And we are very excited and keen Good. to have the advantage of it. Um, to think about um, a creation of a market mm. um, the size of um, 1.2 billion mm. in terms of the population and then the value of it that is 2.5 trillion then um, um, you, you one can only be excited and, and based 
um, himself up um, for even if there's going to be challenges, you brace yourself up and then take the full advantage. Um, we are business people, we look at um, opportunities. Yeah. We look at advantages yeah. and then we, we make use of it. That's what every businessman do. Okay. And we see a, a huge potential in this, especially when it goes with such a huge incentives also okay. that there's not going to be any barrier, barrier of even um, traveling, the visas and all that, a barrier of um, duties and all that. We've been crying about duties and if you get the same um, um, goods that you were otherwise importing from uh, Europe and Asia, you are going to buy it um, uh, to bring it um, uh, with no um, duty. Then, of course, everybody will be excited, all things being equal, if the price is also okay. Because sometimes we'll hear this, but our um, other uh, continental players, other um, the European Asians and all that, don't also forget that they will also be setting out and devise new strategies yeah. to counter yeah. this. So if uh, your duty is 20%, and then they sit down and say that we have to discount um, our wares by 20%, they have um, just <laughs> um, um, zero in on whatever thing you, you want to do. So it depends on how um, strategic we will be and how we are able um, 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 to harness the advantages to, our, to ourselves. And for us, we, we are even for trading. I, 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 I want to believe that you wanted me even to say that um, I'm thinking only about the trading aspect. Mm -hmm. No. Um, in the supply chain, uh, we do not want to position ourselves only at the receiving end. Okay. It wouldn't be good for us. We are talking about um, 1.2 billion. We, are, we should also think about how we can also supply to this chunk um, of um, the populace. Yeah. And, yeah. and because um, some of the brands we have actually made, some of the brand names, mm -hmm. are we going to do away? Because now we are, going, we are looking um, within Africa to buy alternative goods, or we are talking to our suppliers um, to, to come down and then join hands in manufacturing those brands that we've made it popular. Creating value. Uh, uh, so uh, to create value so that we all take advantage. So this thing, if you look at it well, is going to um, catapult Africa into um, huge industrialization. This thing. You know, um, Africa is the only green. Uh, so, uh, Africa and then some part of uh, Asia and then a certain part of um, South uh, America. These, these are the, the, the marketable um, areas now everybody is looking at. So if the, there's this opportunity and then um, we position ourselves where we, we, we do the nursery contact and all that, we can even bring most of our suppliers who hitherto were manufacturing for us outside to come here and then partner with this. So it, it's a very exciting um, moment yeah. in time and we thank our ministers who have made this thing happen in this um, time that um, we, we, um, what um, remains is for us to all um, find ways, um, the stakeholders to think through, to see where we have the comparative advantage. In this, um, cost is going to be key. Yeah. Um, quality is going to be key yeah. and all that. So yeah. in the, at, at this time, we are not going to say made in Ghana, so it's yeah. going to be made in yeah. Ghana because now Africa is going to be an entity. Mm -hmm. And so we have to sit down, find where we have the comparative advantage, and then we will all move together in this tangent. Okay. And you talk about the fact that if we position ourselves very well, and we begin to do all the necessary things that would allow us to harness the potential. From the conversations so far, or from the conversations uh, thus far, do you think that we are doing the grounds work, the necessary preparatory grounds work to get us there? Yeah, it, it depends on the larger. This one is not oh, only, only for um, Ghana. Yeah. It's for the larger continent of Africa um, to um, look um, at the challenges that the unforeseen one and all that. L let's say, for instance, um, we're talking about the ECOWAS, um, the ETLS, where Trade one country scheme. can say will not allow goods to come and all that. 
is it going to come in a in disguise in other form mm. where people are going to use quality as a measure, as, as a, a barrier. Measure, yeah. As a barrier. If you don't meet the standard, you don't this, come in. This so are we going to harmonize? Um, I, I, I'm going to harmonize the, the standard authorities in, in, in all these countries yeah. so that we know that these are, this is the common um, standard that we all require. Um, how are we going to check? How are we going to make sure that bureaucracy itself do not even set in? Yeah. Because the, I, I can foresee bureaucracy even coming in. Yeah. Because then we are going to do due diligence mm -hmm. on the country of origin. Of course. Because now um, all that we are saying is actually for um, goods that are manufactured within Africa. It's not goods that is to be transshipped from Asia and uh, to be part of it. I hope a minister will uh, clarify this. Yeah, yeah, and then we are going to dwell on the country of origin being that of Africa. Yeah. Is that if we are talking about it, is it going to be just a mere assembling of the goods? Yeah. Then somebody would say that about 70% of the components came, came from, from outside um, China came, and yeah. all that. What modalities yeah. have we set? Because otherwise, we'll be thinking that we are going to do the right thing, but you the, get there the implementation the time yeah. is going to see even a Western. That's why I say that it, the majority uh, depends on how prepared we are and how focused we are in a um, and dealing with uh, specific issues. Okay. We are talking about the, uh, the clearing system. We will need a, a common platform, like Minister said, so that even if we, we say that we are going to do this uh, continental free trade area, it means that it's also going to help us. Um, the issue of the, our forest should be done with, even with this, so that even if we have a, 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 a innovative clearing system, where it, it only allow us um, to cross-check the balances and all that we may not depend so much on a, a currency like the, um, the, the USD dollar or the CIFA or yeah. some sort. So we have to think through uh, all this and, okay. and uh, if we're able to play, then uh, um, yeah. And Honorable, are we answering some of these questions as we move on? Because uh, maybe probably you also want to tell us timelines. When are we supposed to see uh, some form of implementation and what preparations have we made thus far? Okay, but before I come to that question, let me help um, your doctor a little bit in terms of the preparedness by Ghana in regards to where we are on this particular program. Um, you recall that uh, when we came into government as uh, a new MPP government, uh, we came up with strategies mm -hmm. and um, directions from the president, Mr. the visionary president, to as a position as for this particular um, program that we are going to enter into. Um, I believe that uh, the Ministry of Trade and Industry came out with a 10-point industrial transformation agenda, which uh, encompassed a whole um, array of industrial activities which would position Ghana up there and improve on our production or productivity. Now, this was all aimed towards this particular exercise. Yeah. Where if the AFCFTA should come into play, Ghana will be prepared and ready to ship goods to the continent without having to wait for anybody. Um, we're talking about the stimulus package. Immediately we came into office, we um, identified companies that were uh, commercially or economically viable but distressed to give them a little bit of um, what we call in the outside world uh, a bill out for them to be able to come back on their, on their feet and start working again. Uh, several of these companies are working, including some of the Tesla companies, some of the oil uh, palm companies and so on. Then the one district one factory which today we are making a serious uh, headway in terms of commissioning some of the projects. Then of course we have the strategy and core industries which is looking at integrated um, aluminum industry and particularly the automotive industry where today we have even gone ahead to launch the automotive policy and just by that policy statement that we made almost all the major automotive industry uh, industry giants came to Ghana to start to establish their uh, production here so we have made sure that we've uh, positioned ourselves in readiness um, to take advantage of this uh, AFCFT that is uh, coming into play. 
now uh, to answer your question yes like i said earlier the commitment from the african leaders in this particular instance is quite unique because you would ask yourself that in heaven's name how could a group a body with 55 uh, countries mm -hmm. or 55 representatives have 54 signing with only one abstaining mm -hmm. and even that one at the last meeting in niger came out to pronounce publicly that they are prepared or they are coming up to sign. Okay, which country is it? Which is Eritrea. Eritrea. Okay. So it tells you a certain story that all the 55 countries are going to sign on to this program. As the commitment speak, is there. Yeah, the commitment is there. And as we speak, out of the 55, 27 have ratified. already ratified. So we're only waiting for the others to go. Like, well, now that we have all signed, whether you ratify or not, if it takes off, it takes off. Now, this is the catch. Um, we are looking, I hope you know, that Ghana is going to host the Secretariat. Yes. So the Hulk is here. The office premises specifically is what we call the Export Trade House, which uh, building the house is the Exim Bank. Okay. The Ghana yeah, Export Promotion Authority. That's going to be the Secretariat? Yeah, uh, the be office? The okay. And you see it? They occupy the top four floors okay. of, of that building. Okay. Now, uh, we just had a meeting with the AU uh, officials that came for the program. In fact, they didn't actually come for the program. They came specifically to negotiate uh, uh, host country agreement. Okay. Uh, then also look at uh, various aspects of uh, having the secretary and what we need to put in place before the secretary can be uh, able to function. Uh, effectively. Function. Uh, effectively, we are looking at uh, recruiting the um, director general latest by December of this year. Mm -hmm. As we speak, they've come with Hassad down. They are going to bring the zero draft. Mm -hmm by middle of mm. the end of this month. By middle of September, we're supposed to send a response. We we'll said that the two countries, AU and, and Ghana, will sit down. We will agree on the test. And by latest, by 30th of September, the host country agreement is ready. OK. Then going forward, okay. we we'll recruit, AU is going to recruit the Director General. Now, the Director General, as since we have the Ghana office, uh, Ghana as a head secretariat. It is likely that he won't be a Ghanaian. <laughs> mm, that he won't be a Ghanaian. Yeah, we are fine. <laughs> exactly. yeah, so the Ghanaians who have, uh, who have the, the, the ambition <laughs> to be DGs of the. No, but I, I, I'll tell you something. Mm. But it can still come. We to could Ghana. have. We could have had the best. Yeah. Data general mm -hmm. coming from that. Yeah. Because we have the material mm -hmm. and we have the people here with international sure. trade background yeah. and serious. Um, understand people with serious understanding when it comes yeah. to diplomacy in the trade diplomacy and so on but unfortunately that unwritten uh, the un convention, convention there yeah would, would, would let it go we'll somewhere in. else yes it will kick in so certainly it will come from somewhere else now one this person is in place uh, the eu uh, ministers by february oh sorry eu um, leaders yeah by february will have another session and that is where they will approve of this idea you know so by march 2020 is supposed to take uh, place, uh, to take his position here in Ghana. Whilst we're about it, the AU has agreed that they would second, because they have a whole secretariat there that is taking care of CFTA. Now they're going to push all that group because once the um, headquarters starts in Ghana, those people are jobless. Okay. So they have to second or they have to find a way to transfer these people into the secretariat for the time being. Okay. Ghana, as a host country, also have the opportunity to, as it was second, or, or where yeah, we won't transfer, we only second. Let's say we want uh, somebody with customs idea. Yeah. Uh, in the interim, we can second somebody from the customs mm. uh, division of GRE yeah. to go and, and work in there. And so immigration and so yeah. on. So we all have opportunity to do that until the director general settles in in March and starts recruiting. Latest by 1st of July, CFT. Should we should take okay. Should take off. First of July First next of year. July yeah. next year. Okay. We are home and dry, and nothing is going to stop us. Yeah. As far as I am concerned, and from where I sit, looking at the commitment of the AU leaders, nothing is going to stop us from starting from first of July. Yeah. Okay. And and mm -hmm. the concern that so let's bring it home. Now we have a secretariat, mm -hmm. and assume that we have entire staff. And first of July, we're commencing operations with, uh, uh, with uh, after. 
By the way, is the, is the, what acronym are you going for? I heard your minister say after. <laughs> no, but it's, it's uh, AFC, FTA. Uh, uh, AFC, FTA, okay. No, AFC, FTA. We'll, we'll, learn, we'll learn it. We have a mention of Brazil. Quite, oh, quite yes, frequently, so uh, I think you are we have, familiar with it. time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But after is okay, because mm. the fact of the matter is, Africa, formerly it was... CFTA. Yeah. Then we say continental free trade area. Mm. It could be any that would have been easier. It could, yeah, be, it could yeah. be continent at all. Okay. Yeah. So you so added Africa. Continent. So let's add Africa. But now that we have Africa, African continent, we can say Africa. Yeah. It means the same thing as African continent. Yeah. So we can take the sea of make African uh, free, free trade, trade area. So after yeah. It yeah. Becomes, uh, yeah. So I think the sea should just go off. Yeah. This then make Africa life easier. <laughs> but <laughs> Doc raised a very important point, which I'm sure. Uh, that once we bring this whole and situate it home, uh, this uh, whole after business home, people will begin to ask the questions. Now, we want our market to be able to uh, go to our products to be able to go to other markets as well. Currently, it has always been the dream of every business person to be able to penetrate the Nigerian market or the Moroccan market or the South African market. The challenge we have all been privy to that sometimes the product quality, sometimes there, there are a couple of some qualities that had always been used as a measure to push us down there. Uh, don't you think that even as we hit the after, some of these measures will still be enforced and will still be required of our trade, trading public or of our market in, in, in before they can fit in the other, re the other markets in the other region, uh, countries as well? Um, and how are we dealing with it? Yes. Um, it's always been a challenge for African countries um, to enter into or penetrate, this, as we see the weather we use in, in trade terms, to penetrate the markets of other um, jurisdictions, especially the developed countries, uh, due to these things that you mentioned. Um, standards, are, uh, I would say it's, a, it's a, a yardstick that countries don't mm -hmm. actually toy with. Um, the UK market, for example, would only accept uh, a certain level of aflatoxin uh, uh, mm. content in, in, let's say, grains or, let's say, nuts mm. and so on. If you come and it's beyond that, it can only be fed to birds or not be allowed into your country. Okay. The Germany market has its own. The French market has a certain uh, texture content in banana that you for, that if you go beyond, you can achieve. So every country has their own standards. What behoves on the exporter is for you to identify the standards levels or the standard requirement of these countries so that before you decide to let's say uh, ship a bottle of water to Tanzania, you need to find out what pH Tanzania is looking for. Yeah. You need to find out what uh, level of micro. Micro, micro, mm. micro, micro cousins. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was speaking that science from you. <laughs> yes, but microbial uh, yeah. uh, uh, content. Uh, uh, content mm -hmm. that okay. is, and, and so on and so forth. So basically, yes, that one you can't fault anybody. But going forward, there's going to be a protocol on uh, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, uh, measures that um, the African countries are going to adopt. Okay. So that if you want to ship to somebody's country, there are things that we're going to look for before you can ship there. Number two is the rules of origin. And the rules of origin would actually identify who qualifies to ship goods into another person's country. Yeah. As uh, the doctor was uh, saying, um, you cannot bring goods which is 80% uh, already done from China mm -hmm. and uh, add 20% value and say, yeah, it's made in Ghana. Exactly. Yeah. So you are taking it to mm -hmm. uh, Algeria. Yeah. That will not be accepted. That protocol Should is almost true. And I'm sure that um, before the end of the year or before even end of October, the uh, protocol and the rules of origin should be in place okay. for us to be able to identify who can ship and who can ship. So these things are all measured and they mm -hmm. are all actually uh, uh, cut out okay. in, in, in the protocol in the convention, and I don't think that there's going to be a situation where people will ship and uh, would be rejected because of this or that. But before it even goes out, you should our, have known what. And our standards yeah. authority will have the opportunity to actually clear you off or uh, certify you correct before you can send out. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, my brother, Africa today is enjoying probably one of the best periods in their lifetime mm -hmm. where investors are running in 
into this country. When it comes, for example, manufacturing or production of vehicle, Morocco has taken the lead. This year, their target is to manufacture one million vehicles. Mm. I see. One million vehicles. South Africa is manufacturing close to about the same. Um, other countries are doing what, what uh, in Nigeria is manufacturing. Um, that notwithstanding, if you consider the fact that in Ghana, we, together with um, Cote d'Ivoire, produce about 60% of the world raw material requirement of cocoa, cocoa. Uh, for the cocoa conventional industry, and only get six billion, six billion back for producing 60% mm -hmm. of raw material. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in actual fact, the cocoa confectionery industry 200 billion, is it? Produces or churns out about 140 billion dollars every year. Then the people who supply 60% of raw material are getting only 6 billion. I see. Today, our target, as far as the presidents of Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana are concerned, is to add value to our cocoa and see how we can trade between Africa mm -hmm. these cocoa that we produce. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that's going to be the joy of everybody. Mm -hmm. Because if you are able to get half of this 140 mm -hmm. billion within mm -hmm. the confines of Africa for just cocoa, mm -hmm. my brother, you can imagine our fortune. Yes, exactly. And that is where we are heading towards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I would like to find out from the the trading community and maybe doc uh, yeah. from your your outfit is that and we had the senior minister for instance mm -hmm. saying that look uh, it means that ghana you shouldn't be be threatened and in the past we have always had a worry that other countries are infiltrating our market penetrating our market maybe i should use that word and uh, he called or charged you to also take advantage and penetrate other markets <laughs> uh, as we are making things limitless and free for everybody to, how are you going to position yourself to be competitive? Because now you are being charged to be able to penetrate the South African market. Are you in the position, the trading community, to do that? Because obviously, other markets are going to come into yours. Yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, people do not understand the issues that um, my, our people have been bringing forward. Guta. And um, uh, it's about time people should understand Which is? that there should be a clear distinction between trading and migration. Okay. And even this continental free trade area is very careful on this issue. Because then, if it is made to seem um, that um, people uh, from Ghana can then go and stay in um, Egypt or People will say that n now uh, the continental free, um, um, uh, uh, continental uh, agreement allows me to go and stay in Morocco, South Africa. Is that how um, <laughs> the thing is? No, we are talking about trading. Trading yeah. means trading, and so we we get all the barriers cleared, so that we can do our legitimate business and go. And it doesn't mean we are going to relocate. There should be a clear distinction. Okay. If we we want to. Um, maybe ratify um, a, a, a full integration, the residency. Then let's do it. Let's be bold. And let's see if we can get even five countries to ratify it. Okay. Uh, we are doing this for trading purposes. Okay. And trading means trading, and we should get the distinction. As regards to what the, um, the senior minister said, yes, he, he might be right in some um, extent. But if you, 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 you can't transport or you can't assess a market with your challenges and your frustration, sometimes the enabling environment should be created for your, um, your manufacturers or your trading community so that they can be able to even assess or be competitive in these um, areas. So if you, yes, and some, there are so, certain things that a country should be also be bold. And uh, there are certain things that uh, uh, the, 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 the country, the government itself should do rather than the citizenry. Mm -hmm. If um, we are in uh, ECOWAS and one country says I'm not allowing 40, 41 of my products to come, it's not for the trader to bulldoze his way into that into market. That market yeah. It's for the government to complain to the, uh, 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 the, uh, um, the, the uh, ECOWAS the block, body. the yeah. regional body, and say that why should we form a block and then one person should bully, bully the others. Mm. It's not for the, the trading community to say that we are bulldozing our way 
um, to the market. So we, we should get these things clear. Mm -hmm. So um, when we talk about um, these issues, the integration and all that, we are, we are not talking about integration. If we want to fuse up as one unit of a, a, a country, as a continent, let's do so. That is a trade that, that we are talking yes, about. Yes, but if you are talking about trade, let's talk about trade. Trade means trading. You come, you... Um, you, you do your you business have, you with your, your product your, and you go yes, back. you go back. But if you want to stay and integrate uh, 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 as well, man, then the due processes of immigration and all these things, the need to be followed. Laws. Otherwise, let's, let's try and even fuse up our investment laws. Mm. As we are going for the African uh, continental free trade, say that we are going to fuse up. Then everybody, one a person from Ghana can come to South Africa and do tabletop. He can <laughs> come and, and set up a table. I think that, that's not how the uh, agreement is yeah. seeking to do. Yeah. If you are not bold to talk about some of these issues, this thing will come back to hunt us yeah. and it won't work. Okay. So what you are saying is that the, 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 the senior minister, for instance, statement should be made clear to say that it's not as though you are preventing trade the sale and supply of goods exactly. in, in your country, Ghana, exactly. for instance. But a problem will, come, will emerge when there is proper integration coming from you know, the other countries. Exactly. Instead of they just coming to do business. Yeah, no, uh, no, no part, uh, particular um, challenge or problem should be peculiar to Ghana. If there should be a challenge, it should be across, across the board. board. It shouldn't be that one country do open and close yeah. and one country just open up. Yeah. Because it says that... Uh, uh, so if it's opened, it should be open both ends. Uh, exactly. If Nigeria opens it, Ghana opens it. Limitless everywhere. Exactly. Same with South Africa, Morocco. Exactly. So but we should understand. We should uh, be able to know what we are seeking, what we actually are looking uh, for. If we are looking for uh, wealth, commonwealth, sharing our wealth together by way of trading, we should know. But if we are seeking for... Uh, one um, uh, integration as one unit state like the United States of America is, let us do that. Mm. But I don't think that's what we are seeking now. No. So there, there's a clear distinction between um, what we have been talking um, um, against and what, and nobody should um, uh, take us uh, 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 test. Okay. So, Let me, so, so the difference is between the Nigerian product and the Nigerian seller, which is creating the sensitivity. Not especially because probably uh, we, we just don't want to limit it to only in Nigeria, exactly. but we, maybe on the back of the, the senior minister's statement uh, for the other countries as well, not limiting it to don't just... Don't forget that some um, uh, even countries, the giants like America and all that, when they see that their people are challenged, yeah. they come and find innovative ways of supporting them. Yeah. And uh, they, sometimes we cannot go on our own, especially when we are in competition. So if uh, maybe your factors of production is very high and all that, and you cannot even um, um, compete with the, uh, the other markets neighbors and all that, it's not for anybody to say that, but for, uh, take your frustrations and <laughs> take your challenges and yes. go and compete. Eh, 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 That's it, not, the not, best, it. not the best. It's not the best. And all that. And so if we, we, um, I, I, I believe I, um, these people, um, AGI, have been complaining about their challenges for years. Yeah. Let's listen to them how we can support them and then um, they, so that they can also be meaning, meaningful in this uh, sub-regional market and all that. This is how we have to be thinking about and okay. for uh, yes and then um, when we we know this and we know even as a country uh, where we have our comparative advantage like minister was talking about kuku and all that when uh, with the coming of this thing let's dwell on the areas that we have the comparative, comparative advantage, advantage. it doesn't mean that um, um and we have to manufacture and we, we manufacture everything even if we don't have the raw material for instance if um a country abounds with the, uh, certain raw materials. Then localization of its industry alone will make their products even cheap, yeah. cheap and yeah. more competitive than yeah. us. Then we don't even go there. Now, if we started the clay products and the ceramics and all yeah. that, the tasks, we can see that there's a huge potential in this area. Okay. There's nothing that will prevent Ghana that we have the um, potential here. So, so many. Um, industries to uh, go in that direction because it's all about clay and we have them in abundance. So then we can even um, say that Ghana is the hub for tiles. 
Because I know uh, somebody is uh, producing the towels and, and uh, two companies and he's doing well. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, so we can even <coughs> localize some industry here mm -hmm. and it will be, be known that we, if you go to Ghana, ask for towels, you get it and it will help us. It's not for manufacturing and manufacturing um, Alone. where you are yeah. not competitive. Yeah. Ziad, you wanted to say something? I wanted to add a, a, a shift the perspective a bit because we haven't spoken about the role of technology in helping uh, and in assisting in the implementation we'll, we'll, of some we'll of these. we put that after the break, but before then, I, he mentioned, and that's what I had wanted you to talk about, he mentioned the fact that, you know, uh, other countries currently, though, uh, have limitations that I have about 41 products. With these 41 products, you can't bring them into the country. I am hoping, it is my hope, and I don't know from you, civil society perspective, if you've uh, gathered from uh, uh, conversations thus far that uh, some of these are going to be lifted because Honorable mentioned that uh, there's going to be a limitless kind of and the cost as well. Uh, are we seeing that some of these limitations from other markets are going to be lifted because we don't want to see the situation where it appears Ghana, uh, you know, whatever it's announced, we obey nice mm -hmm. and clean. Mm -hmm. And we did that with the axle load. So mm -hmm. we know that anytime there's a protocol, we come first and say mm -hmm. we want to obey. And we obey, and in the end, others don't obey. And it comes hunting us. That is why we had a very huge drop from, from our traffic growth uh, when, when, when the axle load thing was, was implemented. And that's not what we want to see. So keep in mind that some of these protocols have been uh, conceived at times where it was really difficult to implement something and to be transparent about the level of implementation of particular agreements. If you compare West Africa to other regions, East Africa or South Africa, with regard to the implementation of the state of the movement of goods in their borders, you find out that they have started implementing a kind of a monitoring and evaluation tool for their, uh, for their countries as a bloc in order to make sure that they follow up on how the impediments of some of these are. So we had Trademark East Africa and Trademark South Africa which conceived some kinds of online platforms where they piled in all of the complaints that were arriving from, from national level and then they were following up on some of these obstacles and barriers and have been working on resolving these barriers. They have been do doing that yeah. for quite a number of years. Okay. South, uh, in South Africa to a certain level of success, in East Africa very successfully. And so you see Borderless Alliance, for example, a few years ago, we have come up with our own trade barriers, wa.org, website to monitor the implementation uh, of the ETLS agreement and to monitor non-tariff barriers, as we call them, in, com in partnership with the Ghana Shippers Authority and the Burkina, Sh Sh uh, uh, Burkina Shippers Council for the time being because that, that uh, platform is currently uh, uh, being piloted in Ghana and, and uh, Burkina Faso. And so you find out that when you manage to document your issues and then to follow up on the implementation with the authorities in the respective countries, you are more likely to resolve some of these issues. And unfortunately, ETLS was conceived at a time where the implementation was so bureaucratic and the administrative structure of ECOWAS doesn't help. So the national accreditation uh, uh, bodies in the various countries do not have the enough resor adequate resources to work uh, in, in, uh, uh, efficiently enough to report some of these cases. And so some countries manage to exploit that kind of bureaucratic uh, issues to their advantage in order to create unfair competitive advantage, but for let's call it valid reasons. So protecting national interests in any way possible. I think in itself, it can be perceived somehow as a good intention. But there's, there's, a, there's a saying that the, the way to, to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. So, and as the Honorable uh, Deputy Minister was, say, was saying, 54 countries out of 55 have stated that they want to integrate their industries and to trade among themselves, and there's no going back anymore. The okay. AFCFTA is here to stay, to stay. and we have to mm -hmm. show how we can make, make it work. 
market yeah. work and to yeah. our advantage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all. Okay, so we're going to go for a break. When we come back, we'll deal with some of the infrastructures. We'll talk about youth and uh, the role of women and the, uh, the benefits to uh, to all of them as well. We'll also talk about the IT infrastructure on which most of these things will be driven and all of that, as well as transportation, quite key. However, you can also join the conversation, and I've seen quite a number of text messages, some from uh, heavyweight experts uh, who are sharing their thoughts, and I'll be reading quite a number of them. If you also want to call, you may uh, call. Uh, the number that you can WhatsApp us on is 55 Seven, seven. I guess it should be on the screen. Zero five five nine zero one nine one seven seven is a number to WhatsApp, and I'm seeing the South African numbers that are calling. Please WhatsApp the WhatsApp number and call the phone number. The number you can call is zero two zero five five two eight three five three zero two zero five five two eight three five three. The WhatsApp number again zero five five nine zero one nine one seven seven. We'll be right back. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 Lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology. Highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Dear valued client, the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is now live to make it easy to track your consignment and know the estimated duty payable for both general goods and used vehicles. We are pleased to inform you that the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is available for download on Google Play Store for Android users and the App Store for Apple users. This is the best opportunity for all importers and exporters to know the duty payable on every good under transaction. You can reach the team for inquiries and support by calling plus 233-242-435-663. Send an email to support at ghanistradinghub.com. To remain updated, kindly follow progress on the following platforms. www.facebook.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. www.twitter.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. And ghlinkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. Importers and exporters can download the official Ghana single window mobile app, which allows you to track your consignment conveniently and also allows you to obtain your estimated duty for general goods and used vehicles. Please spread the message to everyone importing or exporting. The Ghana Trading Hub mobile app is now live. Download and never be cheated. This is powered by the Smart Ports Project under the auspices of the Government of Ghana and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Smart Port, improving Ghana's ease of doing business. Welcome. Uh, we continue the discussions while we're on break. So if you heard some of those, uh, that should be it. Folks, the guest in the studio is Honorable Carlos Sahinkra, is a member of parliament for Tema West. He's also Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry. Dr. Uh, Joseph Obing is the president of uh, Ghana Union of Traders Association. Uh, Guta and also Ziad Hamui is the president of the Borderless Alliance. We've been talking about the African continent of free trade uh, agreement and I'm getting the permission that I can just take off the continent and just uh, mm -hmm. say after AFTA. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been dealing with it. Uh, you can also share your thoughts with us if you are interested and you want to know how we can trade among ourselves uh, within the region. 055 uh, is the number you can send us a WhatsApp on and uh, another number that you can call us on is 02055 two eight three five three uh, you can call us on that number I will be reading some of the messages that have come so far and we will be picking up the calls in a moment from now uh, maybe I will take you Zia because before we went on break you, you nearly began the issue of uh, uh, the subject of ICT 
are we prepared uh, in terms of technology? Because a lot of things are going to be connected in t with, with uh, uh, technology here yeah. and there. Trading has to be technologically facilitated and all of that. Do you see that happening within this pace that we have? Absolutely. Just yesterday, we, uh, you, you know, as uh, Borderless Alliance, we have a regional network of partners and members, and we exchange information in order to know exactly what is taking place. And just yesterday, they were telling me about the success of the interconnectivity between three of the, of the Francophone countries. Mm -hmm. And you know that customs interconnectivity is very crucial in order to ensure that cargo that transits across West Africa can move freely from the ports of entry along from the seaports yeah. in the coastal areas all the way into the landlocked countries. Once you get your, your information at the port where you are, and then you can move all the way with customs interconnectivity to the, to the country of, uh, to your destination country. Customs are alerted of your arrival uh, ahead of time so that they can say, oh, take your document back to where you brought it because there is some uh, discrepancy somewhere. No, you can do that. You, you have already done it or you can do that one as long as the document is there. So technology is key to ensure a uh, smoother transition uh, of trade because trade eventually is about the goods movement and the information movement and the people who are interacting across it. So IT will uh, reduce some of the human interventions at source, at destination and along the way. So uh, with time, we will get to a point where most of the checkpoints which have been erected in order to ensure the integrity of the documents and the cargo will be needless because first of all you can track the movement of the goods along West African uh, uh, roads. Okay. And then the documents themselves have been filed and have been checked and okay. verified ahead of time. So that will help. So Ghana, we, have, we as Borderless Alliance have been working on interconnectivity between Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, and a couple of other Francophone countries a while ago. But then regional interconnectivity is still a challenge yeah. because of financial uh, uh, issues. Uh, someone put a figure on the cost of uh, interconnectivity across West Africa, and even that one, to, uh, to maintain, not, not just to, to build the system, but then to maintain it afterwards. So who is going to fund it? Who okay. is going to resource it? Where will the money come from? So if the West African countries, or if the African countries cannot support the systems that will ensure the implementations of the free movement of their goods, then it will be a challenge yeah. in the future for the implementation of any kind of agreement, not just within West Africa and beyond. Yeah. But, okay, because you talk about the, the integration of our network systems, and I know that quite often uh, Burkina, Mali, and Niger customs have always wanted a situation where they integrate with the Ghana customs so that goods that have moved from Ghana heading those countries, for instance, are readily seen and known and their status all read by the customs in those neighboring landlord nations. However, it is just the, that of the Abidjan that I'm seeing almost works uh, that, are, that, that, that are ongoing. What about these countries? And we, we just don't have Burkina, Mali, Niger to deal with. We're going to have, with AFTA, we're going to have to deal with Nigeria. We're going to have to deal with Lomi and, and uh, Benin and all of that. None of these have been, have been put in place. And this is not a cheap job. Even that with Abidjan is taking us quite some time. And we have up to July starting after. That is a serious challenge. And li like we have said many times before on different, on, on different uh, discussions, uh, the, the African continental free trade area will not materialize in a fortnight. Mm. And it is not just something that came out of nowhere. There was always this will, this desire, this incentive to integrate your systems in order to create better trade flows, in okay. order to trade back and forth, to export, to import, and to transit, to the benefit of the countries which implement these agreements. Okay. The challenge has been on the financial side. Financial? For some countries, keep in okay. mind that West Africa, for example, is home for some of the less developed countries, not just within Africa, but in the world. So. And in fact, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement also allowed mechanisms that will allow the phase out for the, for the remaining uh, duty-free uh, area. So depending on the level 
of development that the African countries are. They are the least developed, they are the developing, yeah. and then they are the more yeah. developed ones. And so each of them will have a different uh, phase out uh, okay. uh, time. Let, let me uh, hold you up there and then quickly get, get, get on the line because we have quite a number of people that we have held them on the line. Uh, there is one Daco from uh, Western Region. And then there is also Eric from Dansuman. We'll be picking them uh, shortly. In the meantime, this one uh, message that has just come in says, uh, uh, Mr. Samuel Agri, Secretary of the Food and Drug and Beverage Association of Ghana, the disadvantage we have as a country is that we are not taking advantage of all the conversations and where we have, and where we have Ghana has been the loser. Uh, we can take advantage by positioning ourselves by expanding the free zone enclaves by looking at some some of these areas without playing politics with them all potential parties that could possibly form a government uh, should be involved major policy be involved in major policies that affects future of this country so there can be continuity uh, two bipartisan business consulting committee Bipartisan Business Consulting Committee should be put in place to partner agencies as the AGI, Ghana Chamber of Commerce, Food and um, Beverage Association, Ministry of Trade, Free Zones, GIF, uh, Ghana Pharmaceutical Council, GSA, FDA, and others. Uh, their job will be to bring in global partners to establish factories to produce for export by taking advantage of our ports. Three, our railway should be about to bring should be about to bring uh, in the raw materials and production for export. Give meaning to tax holidays. We can turn around the fortune of this country in 10 years. International business has more confidence in the private sector than dealing with management. We expect foreign investment to expand production and not pure retail business. Supermarket, as we see as the malls, are not the kind of retail business we are talking about honorable most of these things i think will fall on you now politics can we have bipartisan business consult consulting committees all of them i think should be addressed by yes um, i see where the gentleman's fear is coming from and it's very true uh, that um, when um, a government starts a project or somebody starts a project um, is wanting to dream yeah. And another thing to have the gift of interpretation. interpretation. Mm -hmm. But the person who dreamt would, if for nothing at all, at least have some traces of uh, explanation in, in this dream because it depends on what they see in that dream. So it is not for nothing that this thing is happening during the time of MPP. Now we can come up with all the good things that will make this particular program work. Um, in the unlikely event that governments changes, you realize that people who would take over because they don't have the expertise or they don't have the natural uh, affinity for whatever we develop or whatever we harness would automatically either um, see it disintegrate or not uh, have the same zeal to follow through. Um, especially when they would find it even the very difficult to speak to the opposing uh, party or the party that brought it about mm -hmm. to come and help. So I see it's the difficulty. Okay. But I can assure him. Uh, he spoke about the fact that we should expand the free zones. The free zones, for instance. But it's part of one, uh, it's one of the 10 point uh, transformation, industrial transformation agenda of the Ministry of Trade. Mm. If you said about what well, one um, region, one park um, thing. That industrial we park. Uh, mm. It is, it is, it, we've, we've, we realize painfully though that in, in, in people, investors shy away from Africa because of unavailability of litigation free. Yeah. I mean, you come to Africa, you try to acquire land to put it in a factory. Uh, immediately you start developing or after developing the factory, come around. then somebody comes up, look, the person who sold the land to you is not the real right, rightful owner, then becomes, you know, court case. And so so people, what's been done around that? So what we are doing is to acquire parcels of land all over the regions in, 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 in Ghana and, and, and uh, develop them into enclaves where um, factories uh, or investors mm -hmm. can come in and just have readily available service boards yeah. and put their, their uh, factories. Indeed, we are even moving away. He is talking about freeze, expand the free zones. Yeah. Today, the Ministry of Trade is doing everything possible to move away from a free zone yeah. era to special economic zones yeah. yeah. where people who also want to manufacture are not indulge in just exporting mm -hmm. but target home consumption would also have the opportunity mm -hmm. to enjoy some incentives and, 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 and be in the end. So it stands to reason that, you know, people have to plan 
uh, and, and, and develop this thing, this concept, to a certain level to gain full advantage of whatever uh, projects or pro programs that are coming. Okay. Uh, we, in the Ministry of Trade, as I've said, together with the Ghana Investment Promotion Authority or Centre, mm. uh, embarking on a serious uh, investment drive where anywhere and everywhere that we go, we try to get people to listen to our story and see if uh, they don't find Ghana as the best investment uh, centre, okay. investment, uh, you know, uh, place within Africa. Okay. So there's basically we are working on whatever he's talking okay, about. Okay, there's another question for you though. It says, my question goes to the Honourable Minister. What mechanism is the AFTA putting in place to ensure that the regulations of this free trade block is imputed into the trade laws of our signatory countries to avoid mm. a kind of right. xenophobic attacks on shops owned by right. other Africans mm. in South Africa and such as uh, it is in Ghana it. where businesses owned by Nigerians are shot? It is a very legitimate question. I, I applaud you for asking this question. Indeed, um, it, is, it is a fact that citizens of, of every country will feel uh, threatened when they see that other uh, citizens or citizens of other countries are coming in to annex their businesses. Of the, I mean, uh, if you look at my right side, it's, we, I don't need to show you an example uh, too far away. Uh, <laughs> you knew that, why, you knew that issue was going to come. <laughs> is he exhibiting that? <laughs> so but, uh, but he's right. Is he, yeah. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a family to look after. Yeah. I'm doing a particular business. Mm -hmm. Somebody from somewhere comes and starts threatening this business. I have every right to revolt. And so sometimes I don't blame them too much. Except that, you see, we're not living uh, as an island or of our own. Our own. We live in with, together with people. We have regional protocols that we have signed up to. So we have to go within the confines of the protocol and see how we can use that to our advantage. But that notwithstanding, I want a gentleman to understand that immediately these things are ratified, immediate protocols are ratified, it becomes part of the national law. So parliament now has to adopt the protocol and now rewrite it into our laws. our laws. If there is any portion of our law that comes apart from the constitution, yeah. if there is any portion of our laws that conflicts with a particular we protocol, amended. we have to re adjust it and let it come and, and sit. What is happening or what happened in South Africa is very, very unfortunate because if anything should happen in that regard, South Africa would be the first country that would really lose out seriously. And I'll tell you why. You see, South Africa has already positioned itself seriously in contention for this CFTA. You would think that their thinking 30 years, 20 years ago was centered around the fact that something like this was going to come. Because when you go to many countries, South Africa has placed their retail shop there, the games, the shop rights, and all the woolworths and stuff like that, and all they sell is South African products. So they manufacture the goods in South Africa. You know that you cannot sell everything in South Africa, so you have to find a way to push them into the African market. And all these shops that I've mentioned, if you go there, the goods you see, they are manufactured in South Africa. Yeah, but the, are they ready to accept those that will be coming from our market? Now, I see you wear a very fine uh, foot, mm -hmm. for instance, very fine. And I wish that people can see. <laughs> but, you know, if this is coming from Ghana into South African mm -hmm. market, where they already have the Woolworths and have uh, all, all the best shops selling their product, uh, are they willing? Are they ready? Is the system going to allow them to accept this? At, at this juncture, they won't have a choice. Okay. At this juncture, they would have to accept what they have signed on. And no more pass. Protocol. But what will be the problem is the is the uh, integration factor that the doctor spoke about. Uh, are they supposed to come and stay here, or are they supposed to just just come, come and, and trade and go? go? That is really a big question. But I'm sure that if the fine print of the protocol should come up finally this will be addressed, especially okay. in the rules of Yeah, the um, uh, I'm very much aware mm -hmm. that the protocol doesn't capture the uh, full integration and uh, migration. I see. Uh, uh, now, for now, area. for now, they are not ratifying any residency policies and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. So we, it should be clear. Trading means trading. trading. And uh, uh, it, should be, it should be looked at. If, if you do not take care and then we pretend that yeah. everything is so okay, okay with it. This African continental free trade is not going to work. Because then, because there are not people in my backyard who are saying that because of the continental free trade, they are now going to stay in Morocco. I see. But is it going to happen? And Morocco uh, can't going to allow them to go and stay there because when continental free trade. they already free. have their own market. No, trading means trading. And we should, we should get this. Immigration is migration. And then we don't have to miss the two. And we don't have to even to fall shy. 
of saying it as it is because if there's there should be any challenge regarding this thing then ghana shouldn't be left out yeah if we want to uh, infuse ourselves together as one entity then we should say that now it's free for all everybody can go but it's not that every because all i've uh, taken my time to um, uh, read through all the investment seen investment it. laws um, in all the countries and there are some kind of protestness um areas yeah. for the indigents this is not only ghana yeah. so we shouldn't feel shy of uh, making our laws. That. there's nothing wrong with that yeah so I don't know where the, the fear factor is when uh, to our, our government system. Because uh, a, a, law, a law, a law, a law is law. What, what they are saying is that when we talk to government, they say that we know you are right. right. Everything goes to your favor. You have the law on your side. But we didn't um, monitor this from a long yes. time ago. Yes, uh, so uh, for about, about uh, yes, yes. more than... Because when this law was promulgated, Guta was not even formed. I see. So we came to meet this law. It's not there because the framers uh, thought twice and saw that there should be at least some area. Because when we, we say that we are driving investment, we are driving investment to more technological areas where the capital is for power. We don't drive investment to retail areas. It's never done anywhere. Okay. So what we are saying is not that we are, we are not allowing anybody. We, we should do trading freely. Like, well, um, there, there shouldn't even be any hindrances when it comes to visa acquisition and all that. You go, you rent your hotel, you find local partners, um, you, you trade, buy, you, you sell, buy, and you then sell, you come back. And you come, it doesn't but mean, don't come and it doesn't and mean relocating. <laughs> if, if when the get one country decides to relocate today. in one country, we, we should get it. Okay. I, I don't think know that where the fear yeah, factor you, is. You wanted to touch on that and then also add a bit of the women. Factor. I mean, for the sake of time and discussions, I'm not going to pick the international news. And I'm but in full disclosure, yeah, in full disclosure, it has to be pointed out in both ways. On a regional level, yeah. the ECOWAS protocol does have a provision that has to do with the freedom of the movement and freedom of establishment. Now, with all due respect to Dr. But I, I don't think it's appropriate to enter into that area. It's very highly controversial. I see. And, that it, you, and we understand. That you prevent the integration kind of aspect? Because th that's key. I mean, that's where integration the of problem is coming from. I think the freedom of movement, yes, uh, more or less, it move assumes the fact that you move back. and you stay for um, a while, uh, you, engage you in not, your business. And, uh, you and do not know the return. laws. The laws are threefold. The one for free movement of goods and services is there, and it's not clear. Yeah. Then they haven't even gotten the courage to ratify the residency. Yeah. Where freedom of establishment and all that, because all, all of that, the caveat there is that to follow the, um, the, the, the rules and regulations of the sovereign uh, country that, that you are in. It. That yeah, if that you, you go beyond yeah, and the, the 90 days and all that. So all the, the new ones that they want, the provisional one that they wanted to come, because we haven't signed the residency and we haven't ratified it. And none of the countries are bold to ratify it. Yeah. It's only Ghana that want to integrate all, uh, 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 let, let all, all of them. And then even now, our uh, 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 free education system, they are all going free and all that. So uh, it's Ghana. I see. And then we are me, not saying anything. Let let we, don't, we don't hate foreigners. We like foreigners. We know that. But it's, it's just it's coming and good. It's, <laughs> <just coming. laughs> it's Ghanaian. We love. We <laughs> love all these foreigners. <laughs> and, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And, on, a, and on, an, on a continental level, mm. I think that the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is not the only. Uh, it's one of the pillars of the vision 26 of the Agenda 2063. Uh, which includes also a vision of opening up the African skies and also includes an element for, the mo for freer movement of people across the continent. But I guess Dr. Dr. Bank does have a point here about the fact of uh, indefinite residency in a country yeah. and, then com and then competing in some areas with, uh, that are highly sensible, in areas that are highly sensible. So, but in full fairness, I would say that we have heard that the new investment uh, uh, laws that are coming in will also factor in uh, a part that will allow or, or will provide a more even competitive field for everyone who is doing business in okay. Ghana. So I think that one, yeah. maybe and it, who, it will who, be... Who said about that? Because if there is going to be a new investment law, um, the stakeholders will, 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 will be factored in. Because yeah. the, the, the law, this law, as it's even fashioned, is not even six years old. 
during an yeah. exerted time that we have graded the law. We haven't even evaluated, we haven't sat down. So it, uh, it doesn't lie, it doesn't yeah. lie on anybody's uh, bosom to go and uh, change any law. Mm. Let me tell you, Nigerian government repatriated uh, four Ghanaians barely three months ago. For what? For what? Because they say that they have had infractions on the implication laws of that country. If mm. we are fused together as one entity, because he, he is saying this because he knows the confines of the ECOWAS protocol yeah. and that um, the limitations of the protocol and that if somebody go beyond the confines of the protocol of the national laws and then the, the national law are... goes. So we, we should even take a clue of that. He understands the issue. The ECOWAS um, head office is cited there and he knows all the issues. Let me, let me, uh, Doc, I know that that side, I think we have to engage a lot more. And honorable, yes, I, <laughs> you, should, you should realize by now that there's a lot of engagement yes. that requires to be done to deal mm -hmm. with it. But talk about youth and uh, women in this. Uh, do you see, and from civil society, are you seeing signals that there's enough preparation for youth and women to harness the potential? I'll tell you that we spoke about these two particular issues recently in Niamey. Yeah. because the civil society organizations had a, 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 spe a special forum in the, uh, in the week of the Heads of State Summit in Niger on the 3rd of July. And then we had the chance to discuss about the role of the African continental free trade area when it comes to the youth employment and the creation of, it, uh, of uh, jobs yeah. for, the, for the bulging youth of Africa. We have to, we have to discuss things as they are. You have okay. to find ways to develop uh, uh, the youth. And some of the uh, and the African Continental Free Trade Agreement will create economic growth in countries that are prepared to harness the potential of that agreement to export more, okay. to create more jobs in that area. Okay. Now, the women and the women associations, especially those who trade at borders, and you know that it's not just in West Africa that women form the bulk of the traders across borders, and some even. Uh, document the amount of informal trade to take place across West Africa up to 85 percent. Okay, I think. Uh, so uh, they have a role to, to play, play by by, re by reducing the, the the amount. Let me have Honourable uh, uh, give us that kind of assurance. Are we seeing that kind of preparations where uh, women will be able to take advantage? Because trade, as he said, uh, we see a lot of the women. If you go to the Paga border, for instance, a lot of women bringing in tomatoes and onions from Burkina and all that. Are they prepared enough capacity building and all of that to well, yes, the potential? Uh, before, before I come to that, let me try and... Uh, I mean because of time, so we would have to do that. <laughs> <here> just <laughs> about just about one, yes, a little few of my brother, and, and say that the, uh, one of the cardinal reasons for this CF, uh, AFCFTA uh, is to integrate African economies. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Within that, we have what we call factor market integration, mm -hmm. where the movement of people is going to be yeah. captured. So, like he said, no country is ready to say, okay, let us sign it off. Everybody can go and stay anywhere at all. Exactly. Any number of days. exactly. It's not possible. Okay. Exactly. Thank so you. They okay. should not be Thank you. worried. We are, we are all for uh, <laughs> continental free trade. Uh, coming back yeah. to your question, you see, uh, into mm -hmm. these uh, industrial landscapes, yeah. uh, one of the most important areas that every country is harnessing is startups. And uh, of course, startups include both women and men. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've heard about our MEIP project, mm -hmm. where the initial business development is happening. Yeah. Uh, we are looking after um, the youth to, as uh, so we set them up with uh, some capital for them to go out there and, and, and produce. Okay. Uh, the MESSI, together with the Rural Enterprise Program, also how we call the Enabling Youth Project where women, both women and men in the rural areas, rural sectors, are being uh, potentially developed to become entrepreneur and, and for them to start their own businesses. So uh, in all um, fairness, I would say that we have actually taken care of a situation whereby both women and women, in special those in the startup culture, would have the opportunity to also showcase what they have. Okay. Indeed, we are even entering into a program with JICA mm -hmm. where we've asked that we have some incubators set up in five, all the five public investors that we have on the campuses to develop the innovative and creative abilities of our kids, even before they exit the exits of, um, of, of, of the university. Okay, thank you. So basically, we are on track. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm just quickly going to go through this uh, 
text message and then, then we'll be ending. I'll let you know the schedules yeah. of the vessels yeah. coming into the port, but we will not be able to bring you international <laughs> news. Now, Hima from Tema says, uh, African yeah. Continental yeah. Free Trade yeah. Agreement oh. after. It's great news. I just pray Ghana is well positioned to take advantage of the beautiful opportunity that this exactly. will be bringing. Mm -hmm. uh, this question I have read, uh, international, it says, uh, this I have also read. Uh, this one is commending you, Honorable. It says, good delivery by Honorable Carlos Ahinkra. Now I understand this clearly. Uh, he's indeed a valuable <laughs> asset uh, to this uh, government. He and his minister has been working so hard and tirelessly to bring this to fruition. Continue doing your good work. I'm sure this is coming uh, this is coming straight for you, Honorable. So it says, good evening. And this one is one Ishola, Isifu Ishola from. And some women says, uh, good evening. A very interesting and educative topic of uh, discussion. However, one of the ways through which Africans can trade amongst themselves, as far as AFTA is concerned, is to eliminate the use of colonial terms. Terms such as Francophone, Anglophone, mm. or Lusophone Africa. Mm. Is he right? Let before I continue. Well, so what is this? Um, so his point is that uh, neither France nor Britain or any other European country own any part or whole of Africa. As Africans, we must promote our languages or cultures. One of the uh, commonest languages in West Africa, uh, for instance, is Hausa. For us to trade amongst ourselves, we must hmm. promote Hausa as an international African language. We must come out of the colonial mentality of thinking we are Africans and we should be seen as such. This is from Isifu Ushola. Is he right? Because I've been to Niger, I've been to Mali and all those places. And sometimes if you can't go for the, the Fran French, which I, I'm not able to mm. go for, they ask you whether you can speak Hausa. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, and the Eastern people, Swahili, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's easy for you. Mm. As well as so West Africa, so you, you're yeah. looking at language and it, no, you know, it's, fixing it's, some it's, of these it's, things? It's not possible. Okay. Mm. The, the reason why Africa looks like a broken mirror is uh, because the uh, colonial mm. masters mm. managed demarcations. to put these demarcations uh, in place. Okay. And of course, as it is today, yes, it is so, uh, you know, it's very, very backward to call yourself Francophone mm. or Anglophone or whatever. Yeah. We are Africans, yeah. but you cannot run away from the fact that we speak certain language. Yeah. I can speak French, yeah. and the French one will find difficult to also speak English. Yeah. But until we find a way to commonize, uh, uh, common, uh, find common a common way to yeah, speak. The commonality between these two languages yes. and see mm -hmm. how we can position ourselves in speaking these two side by side. Yes, it's always going to be difficult. But I agree with him. Except that as of now, we have not couched any new, new yeah. technology to refer ourselves to. Yeah. But uh, Africa phony or how was that? How that? Okay, so we're going to, we're going to pick the, the schedules of the vessels that are bringing your goods into the port as well as the Bank of Ghana exchange rate that you need to know to clear your goods out of the port. Next.
up uh, the evening's discussion with uh, 30 seconds each from, from the guest. Uh, I start off with you, Honorable Deputy Minister. Yes, uh, what I'd like to say is that this EFCFT has come to stay. And uh, we believe that it's something that is going to actually be the best for the um, Going forward, the Ministry of Foreign Industry, together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, are going to organize specific stakeholder consultation okay, and deliberations yeah. just to let people understand what is expected the asset. Exactly. If we pick the, let's say, the trading, the fi financial time. people, yeah. if we pick the manufacturers, we pick everybody is going to have yeah. a section for us to explain how it is today. Okay. And there's nothing so scary. I don't want yeah. Kenyans to yeah. do that business. It just needs to be explained and a little more. We have to be competitive yeah. uh, in our business. Okay. Good yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, Ten we, seconds. We want to give assurance um, our support um, for the quest to create uh, such a massive market and uh, we are all for it. Um, you know, um, it, it's only, it's very cultural for Ghanaians to um, embrace foreigners and we love foreigners and we are, we are going to take advantage of it and then even start moving to the other countries to find out the potentials there so that um, we'll be you can at take a quick, advantage a quick of start. And, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll surely do that. But w once we say that, we are not also going to neglect our local industries. Yeah. Um, it's for them also to position themselves well so that even before we go out um, looking for the, those from other countries, we would have assessed them okay. even before. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ziad. The Borderless Alliance is excited about the CFTA and endeavors to work within the CSO groups in Ghana and West Africa to work with the Ministry of Trade of Ghana, with the CFTA Secretariat, with the authorities across West Africa to ensure that we harness the best of the potential of the continental free trade area okay. to the benefit of Ghana and the rest of the country. Okay. There are so many uh, uh, issues that we are working on in order to support them in our various capacities. We, for example, as Borders, are working on redesigning ETLS. We'll have more news about that one okay. later on. Okay. And uh, there are certain uh, measures, uh, there are others who are working on studies in order to assess the impact of AFCFT in Ghana and elsewhere so that it will give more information to the decision makers to know where to target, where to focus our, our efforts, where, which value chains to grow, which value chains to leave out, let's say to outsource. So we will all play our various parts in order to ensure Thank that you. we benefit the most from, the, from this very good mm -hmm. initiative. Thank you very much. So Ziad Hamu is the president of Borderless Alliance and Dr. Joseph Obing is the president of Guta also the honorable member of parliament for tema west getting a lot of fans with the text messages yeah. from your constituents mm -hmm. and also um, and the deputy minister for trade and industry mm -hmm. as carlos ahenkra uh, thank you gentlemen for coming and uh, also thank you for watching the program i'm sorry i couldn't pick up uh, the calls i'm seeing quite a number of queries uh, text messages coming through uh, but i apologies next week we'll be picking them but honorable i'm sure that uh, we'll continue the discussions and quite yes. a number of engagements yeah. going forward yeah. thanks for watching thank you thank see you, you. Thank you.